Hello everybody. Um, I've been asked by uh, Modern Mini 3D, aka my my kid, to do some um, videos on terrain that he sells, and because I'm already doing a project in Vietnam, we're going to start off with uh, items for a Vietnam firebase. <clears throat> this uh, item here is a machine gun nest. Um, it comes in three different three different parts uh, the roof the main base and the sandbag wall um, in this video I'll be uh, showing what I'm going to be doing for two different gun nests um, and how I base them and everything like that but you don't necessarily have to base them they do come on the base like this and you could do them up just like this um, so the painting is pretty basic and how I'm going to show you how to do it um, and then I'll elaborate on how I'm basing mine and uh, we'll go from there um, all links will be in the uh, description below for different things that uh, we talk about in the uh, video um, the print is done on a filament printer so you will see extrusion lines um, on sandbags and on the wood and what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to um, basically take those extrusion lines and either hide them or use them to your advantage in making the cloth the fabric the burlap or whatever the sandbags are made out of look like that and the wood to look like wood so um, we're going to cut the video right here and then we're going to continue on with how I'm going to base mine and the primers that I use to uh, prime up my uh, 3D prints. And we're back. Um, so, you don't, like I said, you don't have to necessarily base your, your gun nest because it's already on a base. But because I want to put it on a little bit of a raised mound. I've got this piece of wood basing that I've sanded down the edges, made it a little contoured, and I want to put it on here, but you'll notice that the corners are, I don't know if I could get it like there, but I want to be able to put this on here and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut and round the corners. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk to you about priming and uh, what kind of primers I use. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so now we've got the corners cut on the gun nest. And I have glued it onto the wooden base. And I have glued the sandbag onto the wooden base. And then I've got the roof separately. So what I do with my filament based uh, 3D prints is I use a black or dark gray sandable automotive primer. It's a filler primer. It's a sandable primer um, because I find that it helps with extrusion layer lines a bit. And what I'll do is I'll put a very th thick coat on there. I use gray on this one because I can see it there but you won't see that after I'm done painting it. Um, so I always spray it with a really good sandable primer, a uh, filler primer. And then I uh, gave the um, model a coat with a dark br flat brown. It's a Krylon uh, camo brown. And I give it a coat with that. So this is where we're at right now. We're at the preliminary stages of painting it. So when I come back, we'll start on talking about the paints I use and uh, painting the model. So we're on to the next stage. So the next stage for me is painting the sandbags because they're the majority of, of this gun nest. Um, so for that, I don't use our standard miniature paints. Um, I use a lot of Vallejo, aka Interactive, 
and uh, a lot of other different brands. But when I'm painting big pieces of scenery like this, I tend to use, you know, craft paint that you get at the craft store or the dollar store or wherever else. And, and I buy it in these larger bottles. And uh, during my research, I uh, found that um, the sandbags weren't a burlap always. They could be a greenish color as well. So I've seen mixed sandbag positions where there's a mix of the green and the burlap color. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be using um, this uh, pine green, but I'm gonna be mixing in a little bit of a Delta ceramic coat color. And what's the color on this one? Trail tan, any kind of tan. Or, and I'm gonna use that for the burlap base coat too, but for the green sandbags, I'm gonna mix the green with this color a little bit so that I get a different tone of the green. Um, so when I come back, um, I will have these sandbags all colored and painted. Um, it's gonna be a combination of a very, very, very thick dry brush to start off with and then picking out uh, more details um, and highlights and stuff with the color as we go. Okay, now we have our sandbags painted. Basically, I gave them a heavy dry brush and then went over the tops a little, a little heavier. So, with the green, the ones towards the top, I gave a little bit higher coat without mixing in the tan to lighten the color. So at this point, we've got the sandbags done. I've put in less of the, um, the tan or khaki ones, um, the one that look like basic burlap, um, because the pictures I've been seeing have more of the greenish color. So I've done that. So now at this stage, what we're gonna be doing is uh, some of the wood and one of the things that uh, you should if you're doing this model don't forget the sandbags on top of the roof I almost forgot that um, so now we're gonna go away and we're gonna uh, mix up a brown you can use whatever brown you wish um, for the boards and for the uh, beams, for the supports, for the roof. Um, from what I can see, that the 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 browns um, on the floorboards and stuff like that were pretty mucky. Um, but we will be doing some weathering. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brown that I have, a raw umber, and I'm going to mix in uh, some light tan probably the same color as I used for the sandbags just to lighten it down and then I'm just gonna dry brush the wood areas and uh, see how that looks okay now we've dry brushed the wood areas I've given them um, a heavier dry brush in some areas and I've tried to make the stri striations from the um, the filament printing um, look like wood grain and I think it looks pretty good. Um, so what I've done is I've dry brushed in a way that the lines, just giving it a light dry brush so that it looks like wood grain. So now, the next stage for this is is we're going to do um, the corrugated metal. Um, probably going to be using an OD Vallejo green um, just for the uh, corrugated metal. Um, 
and then after that stage we're going to go on to doing uh, washes. Okay, now we've painted our uh, corrug corrugated metal with an OD green and I've given it just a light coat so some of the brown still shows through and it'll fit on there just like that. Okay, the next step will be a wash. Now, at this point, different people like different washes. Some people just like mixing up a black or a brown paint and thinning it out. Um, some people use Games Workshop washes or other companies' washes. Um, I prefer to use... I've got, I like to use oil washes. Um, just because I can remove in places where I want it to be removed so it's lighter and then some places I can have it darker um, but I understand that some people don't use oil washes so at this point you can use whatever wash you want just understand that you can use ones you make up the ones you buy from the store like there's Vallejo washes there's all kinds of washes so at this point I'm gonna step away and I'm going to use a oil wash and then I'm going to come back and I'll, I'll just show you um, what I mean by it taking away a little bit and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm just going to put this video part in the video. Um, if there's people that want to know how to make oil washes, you know, comment below um, and I can do a video on how to make oil washes. But there is a lot of videos out there on how to make oil washes. Um, for me... Uh, the, the oil wash that I am making up right now is a Windsor & Newton Burnt Umber from their Witten oil color. It's not the most expensive of the oils, but it's, uh, it's good. Um, the other thing I use is a odorless paint thinner um, to mix it up. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to go mix up, mix up my uh, oil wash. And I'll be now right back. Oil wash all mixed and I usually mix fairly large containers full uh, because if I'm doing large amounts of projects, I do it all at once. Um, so what I use is I buy a whole bunch of cheaper brushes, uh, synthetic brushes off Amazon. Uh, you can get bags of 50 and, and so on. And that's what I use to put my oil wash. And then I just toss them after I'm done. And so I get quite a bit on the brush. And then I just start dropping it on and everybody goes oh my god you just wrecked it <laughs> but if we'll give it time to dry and then we do the next stage so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away and I'm going to coat this all in this oil wash and then come back and I will show you how to um, work the oil wash and uh, make it look a lot better because right now this just looks gross so what I'm gonna do is paint this and I'll come right now we're back okay so the uh, oil wash has had a little bit of time to to sit and it looks pretty gross right now but the next step is and you have you know makeup tools uh, the sponges for makeup and what we're gonna do is we're gonna try taking off just some of the uh, oil wash Okay, and if you're finding it's not coming off where you want it to come off, um, just use some of the odorless paint thinner that you've got. Put it in a little bit of a container, put a little bit on the tip, and then just slowly just start taking it off where you want to take it off. And you'll notice that it's coming off. And you just want to go around and 
You don't want to take off too much because you want that that dirty look. But uh, you get the point. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around. And I'm going to start taking off a little bit of this oil off places I want it to come off. But you can already see the, the wood grain on the bottom of the uh, the gun. The gun position is looking really good. Okay, so what we're going to do is stop the video right there. And uh, I'll come back after I've taken a little bit more of this off. Okay, so I've taken all the oil off I want to take off. And now you can you can see the wood grain and the sandbags and stuff and including the roof. Okay. So at this stage you could just flock the base or whatever. But I want to go a little bit further and I want to um, level off the base of this with the base of that um, and use, uh, I'm going to be using some different products uh, to make it look like mud and dirt and clay. Um, and then I'll be adding tufts and flocking and stuff like that. Um, but if you don't have those things, you could always make your own um, out of fillers and stuff like that and mix paints and paint it. Um, or you could just flock over it and not worry about the lip, but um, I wouldn't suggest doing that. But uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this away and I'm going to get some tools and the mud and stuff. And then I'm going to come back. And I'm going to show you guys the products and how I apply them. Okay, I'm back. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be using a, quite a few different kinds of effects for mud. Um, one of the main ones I'm going to be using is Vallejo Thick Mud. Um, I use this uh, for more dry, dried dirt. And... I'm going to combo it in with a little bit of ready brown that's got a, for clay. And this one is uh, made by WWS. And it's a light brown and it's a coarse. And I'm going to put a little bit of that in there. I might get some of the, I've got it also in a um, less coarse too. Um, but then I'm going to try out some new products I've got. I've got uh, some dark earth. From AK Interactive. This one looks interesting. And I've also got a, some wet ground. So I'm going to make some areas that look like they're a little bit damp. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the Leo Thick Mud. So you can see I use this quite often. So I use these tools for oil paints and stuff and all kinds of other things but uh, you know I get like some on the, the tool and then what I'm gonna do is because I want to kind of not have a big lip there I'm gonna do uh, apply my dirt along the edge like this and then kind of smooth it out And I'm just going to do that, and I'm just going to move some of it in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this all the way around and do some parts out here because I want the dirt to look a little bit patchy and mixed. And then in some areas I want to get a, I'm going to get it some wet. It doesn't dry that shiny, it dries matte. Same with the others, except for the gloss uh, for the in the uh, wet ground effect. So I'm going to come back 
and I'm gonna do as much as I can and then come back and show you guys. Okay, so I've gotten the Vallejo um, thick mud, European mud, down. Um, so what now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and use a little bit of the light brown course from WWS and some of the uh, less coarse and make patches of kind of a red clay look. Um, now, like I said before, you don't have to make buy products like this. You can make your own or you could just go over it with flocking and grass and stuff like that. I'm just doing it this way because I want all my scenery to tie in. So I've gone in with the more ready clay looking mud textured paint and uh, I just wanted a little bit so now what I'm going to do is because I want a little bit of dark earth mixed in because I find this is a little too light so I'm going to go in now with um, and get that shine off there some dark earth from um, AK Interactive and uh, I'll do that and then I'm gonna go in and make some little patches of wet ground and then after that I will come back so I finished with the dark earth from AK Interactive and I've put a couple patches of the wet ground down so what now I'm gonna do is let it dry for a while and then come back and determine where I'm gonna put tufts and jungle plants. Okay, so I've let it dry a little bit so you can still see the wet mud and it's starting to dry in the other areas as well. But what I'm gonna do right now is use some pigment powders. Um, this one's a, you can use whatever you want. I'm using a light earth and it's got a bit of a red tone to it so I f it fits better with my um, theme of being Vietnam and uh, being red clay and dust and dirty and stuff like that so I'm gonna go over with the light earth pigment and then we'll brush it off I want everything to look dusty a little bit wet tones it down just a little bit too because some of the green is I don't know if it shows up on camera it's a little bright so let me get a little bit down here And as time goes by, this this wet textured dirt will dry even more. And I'll put a little bit more on the uh, A little bit more dusty on the roof. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go over it with just a light, light, light tan. 
chocolate sand color for some more dust. But uh, I'll come back once I get the other color on. But it's starting to come together. So now I'm going to come along and I'm going to use a Vallejo light yellow ochre lightly over top. And I'll start with the roof. Very subtle, just a little bit. Just to give it a little bit more dusty feel. Mixed in with the reddy brown. There we go. And then. That mud there. Get that cleaned up. I'm just mainly getting the edges and higher spots on the. Uh, Try not to go down too low. I went down a little too low with that, and I hit the mud. about it so tones down some of the bright brighter green in the sandbags and we'll go around and I'll find a couple spaces where that got a little too much there okay And that's how she looks right now at this point. So next stage is to let it dry a little bit more. Oh, that's not a good spot. Clean that up. Okay. Let it dry a little bit more. Come back. Do some tufts and juggling the plants. And a couple other accessories. Alright. We're coming back. It's dried a bit. And it's looking really good. Now we're going to do some tufts and some jungle plants. Um, I've got some gamer's grass tufts, extra large from gamer, gamer's grass. 
I've also got some dark green shrubs and some light green shrubs from Tikini Grass and some swamp tufts from WWS. So I'm going to use these and I'm going to place them in different places on the on the uh, base of the uh, gun nest and uh, and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I've done. Okay so now I've put on the sh the uh, tufts and the uh, jungle shrubs how they look so far. And one of the things that I'm probably going to be doing uh, is also um, putting on um, some jerry cans and ammo crates and stuff like that. And I see a couple spots where, there we go, just some of the pigment didn't get mixed in. There we go. But uh, yeah, and as it's drying even more, it's starting to look really good. Okay, so I'll come back after I've uh, done a little bit okay, more. Okay, now I've done all the shrubs, I've done all the tufts, and I've added some ammo crates in between. There was a little bit of a gap there, so I stacked up some ammo crates. And now it's all weathered, painted, got the tufts on. I'm going to call it done. Uh, what I'm going to do at the end of this is I'll put up some uh, photos with some of my Anzacs and maybe some uh, VC with the, uh, the scenery. Um, another thing I did while working on this one, at the same time I was working on this one, I did want another little gun nest. And so what I've done is this. This is another one I've been making. And this one, uh, I used the same core uh, sandbag position. And then I added some other sandbag barricades that uh, my uh, kid sells on his web store. And then I took a... Uh, sandbag roof section from another one of his firebase sets that I'll be painting up and I swapped the roof section I took the, the one that comes with the set and I swapped it with another one just so I could get little variations on the uh, on the um, gun position and so and there you go and this one's been weathered and Pig, pigments, tufts, shrubs. And I think it looks really good. So what I'll do now is, this is the end of this video, but I'll put some pictures on the end with some of the miniatures on it. And then I'll move on to the next piece of scenery. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching.